You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Very soon, the 27th annual Thanksgiving Studio Tour will take place on Gabriola Island. And here is a little guidebook that's been created by the Gabriola Arts Council. And I'm joined by Carol Ferguson, the Executive Director of the Gabriola Arts Council. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So tell me all about the studio tour. It's been going on for 27 years. It's a very successful tour, I believe. So tell me, tell me what you can about it. Oh my goodness, there are so many things that I can tell you about the studio tour. And yes, it has been going for 27 years. And there are some artists on the tour that have been on every single tour. They wow. are diehards. Wow. We love that they're still with us. And uh, the tour is a special time. Um, people register for the tour in January. So they have to make a commitment a long ways out. And then they spend the rest of the year preparing for the tour. And in September and October, it gets really frenzied and you can feel the creativity in the air as the artists are painting and sculpting and, and transforming their studios into galleries in preparation for visitors. So it's obviously an important event for the artists, economically, as well as just getting their name out there. Absolutely. This is a really important uh, tour for the artists economically. Uh, last year, the artists um, reported sales of over $150,000. So that's significant when you spread that over about 50, 55 to 57 studios. Some people have told me that some of the artists on the tour actually survive or get their biggest earnings during this event, sort of like Christmas for the retail outlets. They make their big money in the Christmas period, you know? Is it similar? I don't know if that's a true statement, but somebody said that to me. Um, it's it's a, a statement that people believe. I don't think that there are artists, any artists on the tour that solely survive on their um, receipts from the studio tour, but definitely it's a significant portion of their annual income, for sure. Right, and there was some study in 2010 that revealed uh, that the artists on Gabriola, they had a very, very high number of them that are actually making a living on their art, from their art. Yes, absolutely. That was the Canada Council for the Arts, and it was actually 2011. Okay. Um, they did a study across Canada to see the concentration of professional artists in uh, certain areas, and uh, Gabriola came in ninth out of the entire country for concentration of professional artists. So a professional artist is someone who makes their living from their art. That's quite impressive. And I would say it's probably higher today. We've had quite an influx of professional artists over the last few years, especially uh, during COVID, uh, mm -hmm. because people were getting away from the city and uh, really liking the idea of island life and uh, a slower pace. And with technology today, you can be anywhere in the world and take care of business. This is true. So let's get back to the studio tour. Um, I feel like I'm a, new, I'm a newbie here on Gabriola Island, so this will be my first tour. So I need some guidance. There's a lot of artists, there are a lot of studios to visit. Please guide me. <laughs> okay, the first thing you want to do is uh, get your studio tour brochure, which you have. That has a brief description of every artist that is on the tour, where they're located, and a small example of their work. Then inside the brochure, there is a map so you can orient yourself with where each studio is located on the island. And that helps you chart a course. But the best thing you can do is come to Tour Central, which is located on the upper floor of Nova Boutique and Gallery in the village. And there we will have an example from every artist that is on the tour. So you can have your guidebook and you can walk around the gallery and take a look at the art uh, in person and say, oh, I really like this. Mark it on your brochure and say, I want to go to this to, with this studio. Right. And that happens every year. People, they got their guides and they're walking around and they're charting their course and they're like, oh, well, I'll see this one too because it's right next door. 
So it really does give you a feeling um, of what you want to see and who you want to see, and then planning out your three days of touring. Right. And how many people come to the uh, event usually? Is there a general number every year? Yes, generally it's about 2,000 to 2,500. Um, it's increased over the last couple of years because um, the Gabriel Arts Council has increased the advertising um, across the Big Island and right down to Victoria and Souk, uh, which is a high concentration of art lovers. So we get those people coming up uh, the island for the day to tour around. Um, we've seen a definite increase in off-island visitors in the last couple of years. Last year especially, artists reported uh, that over 50% of the visitors to their studios were from off-island. And this is a really important fact because locals shop uh, artists all year long. There are different markets and fairs and their studios are open at different times during the year and they have their favorites and they go back time and time again, right? What we really rely on for the artists is off-island um, visitors who are seeing their art maybe for the first time and who are coming with uh, the purpose of, of buying. So it's a, it's a really great experience for, for the artists to have off-island visitors and fresh faces coming through their, through their galleries. Right. So could you tell me about the range of artists that are in the tour, just in terms of the types of art that we're talking about? It's vast. Mm. It is really vast. Mm -hmm. There's textile artists, there's woodworkers, metal artists, sculptures, painters, acrylics, oils, watercolors, mixed media, glass. It's, it's really quite incredible. The, the level of skill and artistry that is represented on the tour is absolutely unbelievable. It blows my mind every year. When I hang the, when I hang, uh, the Tour Central, the preview gallery, the art comes in and I always sit back and just take some time to soak it all in because it's hard to imagine that on a tiny island of 4,500 people that we have this much talent in one place. How does it compare to other islands? Because lots of people think that all the Gulf Islands are filled with artists. The Gulf Islands are filled with artists. Um, artists are, are drawn to island life and uh, to you know, building their studios and not having to worry about code if it's under 10 by 10, you know, <laughs> and um, having an alternative lifestyle and, and surrounding themselves with like-minded people. And I think that's what makes uh, Gabriola and the other Gulf Islands so incredible is the like-mindedness of the people that gather there. What do you think that that like-mindedness or that mindset of the artists What's there that can help the rest of our society right now in the difficult times that we've been, you know, experiencing with climate change and the pandemic? Would you, would you have something to say about that? Absolutely. I think that everyone can learn so much from artists. Um, I'm getting emotional thinking about it because they have taught me so much to stop and not be so concerned with the fast pace, to take a moment and appreciate the place where you live, to appreciate the people that are around you, and to create something. It doesn't mean you have to be a master painter or a master writer or, or musician. It means that you're expressing yourself in an artistic format and that will bring you joy in ways that you probably don't recognize without doing it. It sounds like working for the GAC or the Gabriola, Gabriola Arts Council has enriched your experience in life. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's changed me forever. Um, I have made lifelong friends uh, with the Arts Council and had so many amazing experiences with artists and their eccentricities. That's what I love about them the most. Um, a common term is, is when I'm dealing with artists is they even say it themselves, it's like herding cats because they're all so very different and they're working on their own timelines. And so my job has been for the last three and a half years is to work with them 
and not try and make them fit into a mold that I have predetermined, but to see where they're coming from and make it fit what I need. Right. So what are your expectations for this year's event? I think it's going to be a fabulous event. Uh, I think we'll get a lot of off-island visitors again. The advertising and marketing has been strong. The interest has been strong. It's the first year that I've had people from off-island um, contacting me to mail them brochures, which is fantastic. Um, we only we have only have so much budget to distribute brochures on the on the Big Island, so it's nice that people are reaching out. Uh, a lot of traffic on the website, which is great. Uh, the arts on Gabriola.ca is where you will find um, all the studios, examples of their work, and a digital map that you can access through your mobile phone, which is super convenient when you're uh, going around the island and going down uh, small back roads, gravel roads that you don't really know where you are. So it's a handy, handy tool. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I did notice that in here you have the helpful, help tips for the tour. Start at Tour Central, which you've already outlined. Wear comfortable and practical shoes. Slip-ons are very convenient and a great idea. I love that. Very detailed but lovely. Well, I'll tell you why that's important is because um, artist studios are sometimes their living rooms or um, areas that they don't want dirty shoes. So you have to take your shoes off at the door to go in and, and visit the studio. So having slip-ons is super convenient. Okay, great. Then look for our tall white flags and studio number signs to help find the address you're visiting. So that's a very helpful tip. Keep yourself hydrated. Love that you're taking care of people. And then I love this one. Watch for deer and turkeys while driving around the island. Now, it happens that people get they hit the turkeys and the deer. Well, they don't hit them, but it's, <laughs> it's for people who are, who are not used to driving around Gabriola, we have quite a concentration of turkeys and, and deer, and they don't necessarily move as quickly as you want them to. So it's just to make people mindful that we do have wildlife on the island, just like the, the growls banner that's at the ferry, reminding everybody, you know, there's a lot of wildlife on the island, so be mindful. Right, right. And the final one is... If you see a car with four-way flashers, move over. They are a first responder. <laughs> so that's also Very good important. advice, yes. yes. So Carol, are there any concerns among the artists or the council about this year's event? I'd say the only concern that I have, we haven't really discussed it, I haven't discussed it with, with many artists, is the economy. Um, it's the big white elephant in the room and with interest rates the way they are and people tightening up their belts and, and concerned about what the future holds, uh, there is some concern about what the buying is going to be when it comes to art. But on the flip side of that, um, there are a lot of people on this planet that have a lot of money and that do love art and that will come to events like the studio tour and buy things for their homes or their second homes or as gifts. Uh, gift giving is a big, a big thing on Studio Tour because of course we're on our way to Christmas. So um, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll all work out in the end, um, but it is something that we just have to be mindful of. Right. What's the age group of the artists that are involved in the tour? Do you that's have any a, idea? That's a really good question. There's definitely a lot of artists in their 50s and 60s, uh, even a few artists in their 70s, uh, but I'd say mostly in their 50s and 60s. Let's see, are there any? Yep, there are some artists in their 40s, uh, for sure. I haven't pulled them. I haven't <laughs> asked them to see their driver's license, so I'm not 100% sure. Right. Uh, but that's about, that's about right. And this year you have some new artists, I was reading in the guide. Yes, we have nine new artists on, on the tour this year, and that's wonderful. It's always wonderful to have new artists. Um, it's sometimes a challenge for new artists because tour goers have their set roots of, of who they want to visit, but then it can also be amazing for new artists because then there are tour goers that love seeing anything that's new. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it really is a mixed bag. There's no way to predict it whatsoever. The artists have done their own promotion. Um, we do uh, recommend to the artists that they don't um, rely just on Arts Council promotion, that it is their responsibility to promote their own studios, which they have been doing. Um, part of our promotion is uh, social media, 
And I have to give a huge shout out to Kathy McIntyre, uh, the Administrative Systems Manager at uh, the Gabriola Arts Council. She is also our social media manager and she has done an absolutely fantastic job of promoting each of the studios. It's just incredible and the artists have loved it. And how many are there again, can you remind me, studios and artists involved? There are 50, is it 57 studios? Now I'm wondering if I'm mixing it up with 2022. 50, 56 studios and 65 artists. Okay, and that's more than last year. It's about the same. About the same. About the same as last year. Okay. Yeah, the largest studio tour um, happened in 2019, and there were 83 artists, uh, 83 studios on, on that tour. I see, and I guess the pandemic had an impact in the years that followed yes 2020 we were all ready to go for studio tour um but then the regulations came down so we officially cancelled studio tour but then we had an untour because the numbers were up the brochure was out the advertising had been done and so studios opened and the reports back for that were they did quite well wow. because people coming to their studios were had intent they were there to make a purchase uh, instead of just being a looky-loo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 2021 um, it got better definitely better 2022 was excellent and we hope 2023 is even better right okay going back to yourself what motivated you to get involved with the council uh, three and a half years ago well, I saw it as a great challenge. Uh, being the, the executive director of an organization like the Gabriola Arts Council is, um, is a challenge. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of skills that you need to bring to the table. And so I decided to um, take a gamble and apply and went through the interview process and was ultimately the successful candidate. I have learned a ton uh, through the process and have enjoyed all three and a half years. Um, it's actually even more than three and a half now, um, almost four. So yeah, it's been a, an amazing experience. I've learned a lot and uh, I would do it again. What was your experience as a child or a young person in terms of the arts? Was it something that you were interested in then or did that come later? No, as a, as a child, I was a, a Royal Conservatory kid. I took uh, piano for many, many years and theory. And I also did art all the time when I was a child and I took art classes in school. Um, I loved the creativity. Uh, I'm a very creative person, creative problem solver, if you will. And uh, it's something that I would like to get back to. I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do any of my own practice. I do a little photography uh, with some fun, um, uh, a little plush animal that I take around and do shots around Gabriola. Uh, their name is Pat. Pat the cat, I, yes. Pat the cat. Pat okay. the cat. And I, I like doing um, micro photography as well. What's that? Taking a super, super close up so you can't really tell what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To find artist, artistry in different textures and. Right. Right. Yeah. And do you think you that artistic sensibility will that be nurtured in the future? I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. So this is my first year, as you know, going to the studio tour. Last bit of advice for me, please. <laughs> <sighs> That's a really tough one. My last bit of advice of going on the tour is don't set your expectations too high. Okay. Don't think that you can hit all the studios. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rather that you spent quality time at fewer studios than just zoom in, zoom out at many studios. The artists really dislike that when people just zoom in and zoom out and they know they haven't actually looked at everything mm -hmm. that's in the studio. Mm -hmm. it's, it's disrespectful. So spend your time, and if you only get to five studios for the whole tour, well, that's five more artists that you didn't know before. Right. So any final thoughts about this year's event that you uh, would like to share with our audience? Well, I'd just like to let people know that we're having our opening night 
on Thursday, October the 5th, and it is at Tour Central at Nova Boutique and Gallery in the Folklay Village. It starts at 7. We have some wonderful musical guests. Uh, you'll be able to take a look at the gallery as well as um, maybe rub shoulders with a few artists if they're not too busy setting up their studios for studio tour. And uh, there will be a cash bar as well. So it's a great chance to come out and meet people and, and talk about art and celebrate uh, the artists of Gabriola. Thanks so much, Carol, for coming in and speaking with me. Thank you for having me. You are watching Life on Gabriola TV, community television, for you, by you.